depends. Does he have secret weapon or no? Well, are we talking lore wise or are we talking secret weapon? Let's go with lore wise <laughs> and then we'll go with in game wise. Lore wise, Ragnaros is a huge fire lord with probably the power of an entire element behind him. Okay. So I'm going to go with Ragnaros, even though his hammer's really big. But false, that's dead. Fa <laughs> All right, red shirt guy, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> I would go with Falstead with secret weapon. He would destroy it. He would throw it so far. Okay. He'd be an absolute beast. We have to have a difference in opinion, man, or we just can't That's have true. the same jive in, you know? That is true. All right, guys, battlegrounds are ready. Let's get ready for game number three here. Remember, we genius and tricky sports facing off. Uh, bands, Breakfast Holdout, and Tumos Spider Queen. Nope, not playing those. Dragonshire and Infernal Shrines were just played here on the stage. Cursed Hollow will be our third battleground that okay. we are going to. And it looks like BG is electing to go for first pick themselves yeah. again. Um, what have they got out of it? The, each game, they've got out of it Tychus. Mm -hmm. that's, that's been the story for them for the last four weeks. We need Tychus or we can't win. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that again. It doesn't, they're not getting anything out of it. I don't, I don't feel like it's, you know, having as much impact as they need it to, you know? Yeah. Like... Ugh, um. And the thing is, too, is like every team in the league is adapting to it. Like we have Trick Esports, who has ran seventy-five percent heavy warrior comps, and mm. they're switching it up here. Yeah, no more, no more. F you heavy, know what heavy you do warriors. when your opposing team switches it up? You switch it up. You need to get some variety here, and I think it's important here, especially going into game number three. Uh, obviously, game one and game two did not work out for BGNS, and they're playing pretty well. Like they're having moments of like. Yeah, they got some fire going. I think um, something that we were talking briefly about during the break, but we were also alluding to it in the cast as well. Get Kiva on Li Meng. Get him. Get him on Li Meng. I think it's one of their better heroes uh, on on Kirova, who is making it look good. Try and get that. Try and build something around that. I know Kirova. Uh, sorry, Li Meng doesn't have many combos. Sure. Maybe a variant could come in. Maybe yeah. they could have some taunt synergy with that. Yeah. Like, who cares about win rates in EU and Korea and North America when it comes to Li Meng? You have a player that dominates on a certain character. Build around that, get a couple of victories, and then you can start worrying about switching up your gameplay, right? The moment you get a ban from the opposing team on Lee Ming, you know you've done it, and then you work on something else. Uh, regardless, here we are. Back into the ban phase here. BG Genius will get the first ban of the day. Dahaka should be it. There it is because it is Cursed Hollow. Uh, the ban for Trick Esports has been tacit right, or constantly. Yeah. And with Alex Aproji tweeting last week, that he just wishes Tassadar wasn't in the game. I feel like we're going to have that ban all the time. It's uh, very impactful. Very impactful, not only in a previous patch, but also here in Valera patch. In a yeah. different way, of course. Mm. Uh, now provides uh, a bit more extra uh, damage as well as the bigger shields. Uh, but yeah, Tassadar is strong. Yep. Very strong. So now be genius. I don't want to see a Tychus pick. Don't do it. I don't want to see a Tychus pick. Pretend it's banned. Give it away, Tricky <laughs> Sports. You know? <laughs> Um, I don't mind their false dead play. Pick up false dead here. It's a map to get it on. Or um, take Malfurion. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. Okay. All right. Side blade life. I'm down. So, I'm down. relying on some of the big playmakers of their team. Eternal, Zeratul. Yes. We've even seen in HGC Europe opportunities for, well, I mean, <laughs> or lack of opportunities because pe teams have banned out Zeratul against Eternal from just the very get-go when yeah. they have been first pick. Uh, so then the false the Tassadar can come back. ETC Tychus. Um, so that is a Crosby pickup. And I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work. Well, you have your ETC, which is one of the strongest warriors here in Europe. Taking away Tychus and not giving Beat Genius, Tychus, there to whoever they want. Obviously, they want Tychus, so just taking yeah, away is good. Yeah. Tricky Sports ran a few times. They've also prioritized it in the first couple of weeks. They've fallen off of that slightly in week three, but they can run a Tychus. They certainly can. So now Tricky Esports has it over to Beat Genius. They are opened up here for full Wombo combo life. Why did I say Eternal on Zeratul? It's B Genius. I mean, it, you should have corrected me. Well, I didn't want to call you <laughs> out, man. I thought you, I, I was gonna, I was there to aid you if you kept going with it and say, oh, well, yeah, they took it away from that Eternal. That was just so dumb. Call, Ignore, ignore, ignore me. All right, wait. Let me, <laughs> let me go back five minutes in time. Uh, where are we? So, who is actually going to be playing that? I guess Tank for the win is going to be playing that. But they're picking up Malfurion and False Dad. I really like those two pickups. Yeah, there's a False Dad. You get the number one support in Europe here for right now. So Mount Fury and they have a strong foundation. They have disengaged. They have boss control. Beginus has started this draft well. Yeah. Over tricky spots. <laughs> now you start thinking about bans. Uh, do you think there's going to be a Jaina and a False Dead on the same team? Do you think a Jaina here? 
Or do you take her? Because uh, they still have ETC and Tychus. I think... So... Uh, in the contrast to what I said in my terrible, terrible mistake, we haven't really seen B-Genius run for Azerator at all, right? So we no. don't really know what they're going to couple this up with. Uh, they're going to ban out Jaina because they have to target the most common duos mm -hmm. uh, when we're not as familiar with the team running a Zeratul, which I think is fine. But if it was, if I have to really look critically down on what B Genius has right now, I don't think they would have picked up Jaina with it. Because Jaina false dead Zeratul with a Malfurion and a, and a solo warrior, it doesn't feel like B Genius to me. I don't know what you think. No, I think I agree with you. Uh, the way that that has been stated, the way that it looks, we just haven't seen that mix up from B Genius yet. So. Uh, going with the common ban is the best course of action. And the same here for BGNS. I think Rhaegar's ban. You go with the common ban here, because they have ETC, they have Tychus. In the first couple of weeks, that was their first pickup after they had Tychus mm -hmm. in ETC. They want that strong healer that just keeps people alive. And Rhaegar is that choice. And you already have Malfurion. Put the burden on Trick Esports to go with a different support. Because uh, Trick actually hasn't ran too many different supports in the past year, so it would be nice to see them have some variety. Uh, maybe having a Brightwing in their mix-up. Uh, could throw Tricky Sport enough off to where you can control the battleground. I'm just lucky. Oh, they banned Brightwing instead. Okay, so they don't want Peekaboo to be a thing. They don't want extra global soaking to be a thing. I'm just looking through all my drafts here, and I'm just like so interested. This is this is why I slipped up because you we never get to see B Genius play Zeratul, and I'm just like, ah, oh, Tricky Sport's in the game, all right? Eternals there. This is this is. It's it's a very uncommon thing, but I like it it's because they're bringing uncommon. yeah they're bringing something different to the table in their time of dire need. So it's cool. Reckoning and tricky that's, sports. That's powerful. While there are different things on the opposing side, they are going to strong foundation that they have ran in the past. They now have the Ragnaros. They have their Tyrion, they have ETC, they have Tychus. All they need to do is pick up a support, and Rhaegar is still on the table. There's no way that Beechins runs a double support with Zeratul and Falstad. What do you think? about rounding out this composition, and this is my due diligence on my uh, Varian talk, oh God, with Varian Li Ming as your fourth and fifth. Uh, so, I think there's a lot of finesse to playing Varian as a solo warrior. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they'd be successful with it. It'd be hard in a double warrior, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Because um, the thing is now, I guess Kirova's gonna be on the false stuff. Uh, mm, no, it might be Araki. Maybe they are still looking for a, a kid of a pickup. What about Leoric there yet? What? Leoric you can handle there. ETC, you can handle Tyrael. Don't know if they need Leoric. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's maybe like, they want something with Zeratul. <laughs> Anubarak <laughs> Leeming. All right, so at least they've put Kirov on the Leeming. That's what we wanted. Anubarak oh. Solo Warrior. I would have wanted Varian way more than this. Yeah. Um, Anubarak gives him I possible dive control and helps him breath. deal with Ragnaros. You want it simply because of that spell shield when he goes for the uh, Sephiroth smash. So Anubarak can be aggressive, but there's still so much lockdown and Tychus can shred through Anubarak. I do not like solo Anubarak. We've seen it three times in HC Europe and it, it doesn't pay off. Mm. It has yet to pay off. I have yet to see the actual proof that it can work. And I think it only works if you're running against Double Mage or maybe a Jaina where it's all Ring of Frost combos, and that's just not happening. Let's let's look at this composition in uh, a different light. Um, let's look at it in the way that they've taken a bit of a gamble. They've mm -hmm. gone for Zeratul, which is a very uncommon pickup for them. So they're putting a lot of hopes and prayers. This is why I'm doing this. Uh, I've only just noticed I've been doing this. Uh, <laughs> this is why <laughs> the Church of Zeratul is going to have to prevail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, right. There is a lot I'm of Zeratul <laughs> here to work. So all hail the mighty Zeratul. Kay. Make it work for B-Genius. Bring them back into this series. And then I listened to your comment about they've made a bet here. And then I think it is not a smart bet. If you're going to bet, it's at difficult. least put yourself in an odd where you're 5149 or something, right? Oh. Um uh, I see maybe if they go for a cocoon and hit Tyrael and dive in and maybe just get an engage. I, I know I'm on the cocoon trickster wacky meta thing here, but I don't think Hashtag. locust form works here. Yeah. I don't think there's a dive moment. 
Um, I think that there needs to be a massive moment where you get isolation with Void Prison or a massive moment where you get isolation with Cocoon and then go for the hard engage. I mean, Zeratul and Liam Inc. could blow someone up while someone else, while Thregar's Cocoon or something. Yeah, That's true. one way to try and solve this puzzle that they've put themselves into. Can they solve the puzzle? Game number three, Cursed Hollow, B Genius taking on Tricked Esports. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's get this figured out here, man. Game Let's. three. I think that's the biggest brain fight I've had in uh, draft so far. It happens. Reddit dude. will forgive me. Reddit loves me at this they point. They love you. You're perfect, man. <laughs> give, me, so, give me some of that love. Pass it over here. I'll, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're 50% you're, you're of this duo, my friend. So I'll Take it. I'll take okay. it. To the far left, give us the introduction here, Kalos. All right. Of course, it is Tricked Esport here, rocking things out with Remmer Ball are going to be on ETC. Crosby on Tychus. Nappe on Regar. We have Tyrael played by Alex the Proji and Eternal on Rangaros. To the far right, B Genius with the bet here. Eric King will be showing off the Falstad gameplay. We have Kirwa showing off his Li Ming. Please put him on that hero for the rest of your life. Yeah. Take for the win here on Zeratul. And that will be B Genius here going against Trick Esports. Down. Yes. Zero to two. So already, I like the tag for the win is on Zeratul. I think that, you know, a lot of people, we've even seen it in interviews from other teams in, in, in uh, recent memory, that, you know, they, they respect Tank for the win as one of the up-and-coming melee assassins slash second warriors in the European scene right now. So, you know, the, the Church of Zeratul, all mm. amen to Zeratul, like that's going to have to pay off big here. We'll continue to watch as Zeratul hopefully becomes that linchpin here for BG to get a win. Kirwa and Unstable will be in the bottom lane, sieging upon, upon a turtle here. Where we hope. <gasps> about Shifting Meteor at level one. Oh, snap. No Q build? This Hope is build? This is heresy. We're, we're all about religion in this cast, apparently. <laughs> this is this is very uncommon. Well, think about it. Where are you going to get massive engage? We're going to hit cues on multiple members against the concept each genius has. They have false head, they have Lee Ming, they have disengage, they have a new Brack who certainly take much damage from you. Why don't you just go for a poke build and drop a couple W's on them, um, force your opponent to deal with them. You also get control of Zerato when he's blinking around. I'll be honest. As much as, yes, Q build is definitely the way for a lot of people right now, I think there is more to Ragnaros. I have experimented with every single build. He is my best friend. I love him. We go to <laughs> parties together, and there is definitely more to Ragnaros. Actually, this is one of my least favorite builds for Ragnaros, <laughs> fully enough. But oh, it's you're still, an E-build. You're that guy. Uh, kind of. I'm a hybrid, uh, which I can explain <laughs> at some other point. But um, it's... It, it does provide the poke that you're mentioning. Uh, that that poke is very powerful. Yeah, so is. let's see let's see how that goes. Especially when you finish that quest, you can control the moment that it goes, you can chase down a Li Ming that might blink out of it. Things like that are very very powerful with that level yeah. one talent. So watch for him. We'll let you know whenever that does finish up that quest. And you also see on your screen as you'll see the meteor suddenly change directions when you're in the middle Whoa. of fights. How'd you do it? It's magic. Look at him. <laughs> Maybe the Mighty Gus was little and it blew it to the side or something. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Tribute has spawned here. First one in the top right corner. The Mercs have been grabbed actually for B-Genius. Uh, we did not have to Esports with the rotation here on their own Giants. So we're going to have some pressure in the bottom lane and this bodes well for B-Genius if they can poke here and not force a fight. They can get that value in that bottom lane. The other in trouble though. Is retreating. Here's Rimmer. He doesn't take much damage there though. So Static Shield is going to be the choice at level 4 for Arakeen. So he's going to be gaining shields as he has actually been able to put his Static Shard on toward things. Uh, but yeah, this has been a slow tribute to start things off. Unstable, looking to channel. Is there any contention? No, oh, they didn't contesting? grab their own Giants, and so they didn't even get the rotations yeah. here. Rotations was slightly slow for Trick Esports, so they elect to just go down, defend bottom lane, and not deal with the poke. Because honestly, in this early game, we just have a great poke. They have the Hammering, they have the really mean poke, they have Zeratul that can float around and be an annoying nuisance. And if you get anyone down to less than half health, suddenly kill the there. there. Yeah. Um, so the better de decision here is to just wait, hold back, Moving down the bottom lane to set up. Ooh, Falsa just flying in the bottom lane, though. So yeah. Here for defense. Trying to slow this down. Trick T-Spot trying to gain as much experience as possible from powers. Okay, so this is the wackiest thing I'm about to say in in HGC Europe so far. Never mind my mistake in that previous draft. I don't mind Lava Wave in this game. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Oh, wait, what? I'm down. Oh, I love Lava no, Wave. Oh, trickless wacky meta. Um, God damn it. Yeah, man, let's do some Lava Wave life. So, um, the, the reason I'm trying to justify it is because there's not actually that much stun to guarantee yourself really good Sulfura smashes. I know it's probably going to be Sulfura smash anyway, as we see a Thermal being attacked on towards here. He's going to get taken down. A good little rotation coming out from B-Genius. But, 
Th yeah, there's not huge amounts of setup. ETC is going to have to be the setup for it. Um, so there's a lot less setup than we normally see with the Ragnos, is what I'm trying to say for a Sulfurous smash. And to add on top of what you're saying, Lava Wave just delays games forever, especially when you get to level 20 and you get the second Lava Wave available to you. They're going to be doing this weird cat and mouse game with B-Genius because they have Falstad being able to barrel roll, you have Lee Ming with being able to blink out, you have Zero Tilted Zone rotation, Malfurion should be playing safe, and New Wreck and Bro Charge. You're going to have a hard time getting isolation. Yeah. So if you delay out the game longer and longer and longer and you get push constantly happening, you increase your chances of getting that isolation to get those picks to win team fights. I mean, this is all just theory, of course. It's a 5% chance of actually happening. I'm going to uh, go 7%. Okay, okay, 7. Uh, <laughs> speaking of the number 7, at 7, <laughs> we do have Molten Power coming out here, so it's going to be full living Meteor build. Uh, so his living meteor, the more times it actually hits heroes, uh, you get actually like more damage uh, off the next living meteor. So it's, you know, it's again a lot of poke. We'll delay out those tributes for a while whilst it's currently 1 1. Mark's grab down here on the bottom left. A tribute will be spawning soon. It's currently 1 1 for each of our teams in terms of a yeah. tribute. So we should get to 10 safely without a curse being on the field. And of course, the final thing to say it's not going to be Lava Wave is that actually Church, Church of Regard. Oh, God. oh our friends yeah. over at TGN Squadron, Pally Time, <laughs> they made the Church of Regard a thing. You should check out that video if you ever get the chance. It's pretty That's funny. Fine. Isn't Brawl isn't Green Jesus, though? I mean, yeah, Regard or whatever, but whatever. Oh, there's a Tyrael the top lane. Tyrael. Uh, sorry, yeah, the final thing to say that it's not going to be Lava Wave is that it has a seven-year cooldown. So, um, yeah, that also doesn't help my argument, my theorizing. <laughs> Why can't I bring in these negatives? Sorry, sorry, Lava Wave. Lava Wave is the best, <laughs> best thing in the world. Another engage here on the bottom right. Eternal's going in, and we're about to have a little 10 here. Uh, four should eat sports, but with level 10 already for Kenny Guts, the Mighty Guts goes out. Can he get over? No! And Air King does get picked off. Now, Fury oh. coming in. Big silence, oh. but unfortunately, the knockback from Rimmer will stop it. We do, in fact, have the Coon. Yeah picked up here, and we have a big rotation and Tank for the win comes down. So Lee Ming's not here. So uh, Terrell, Tank for the win was just used as a way to actually disengage from that. It will indeed be Sulfur Smash, Ugh. Sanctification, <laughs> Stage Dive, Ancestral Heal, and Commandeer Odin. So again, it's going to have to be a lot on the power slide and maybe just slows here or there for this Sulfur Smash to really work out. Uh, it's going to have to have pinpoint accuracy as Eternal. Oh, here is from the genius. We do have Void Prison available for our Zeratul, so we'll watch for that. Also, Proji should be able to set up here with Sanctification to grab said oh, boss. They are beating this in here. There goes the engage. One fourth pop, as you mentioned, for the seat potential. Now, remember, if anybody gets locked down or is stood still for a little bit, Sulfurous Smash will come in and do damage. That is going to be a good Void Prison. Uh, sorry, a good Sanctification to make sure nobody's going to die off the back of that Void Prison. And Molten Happy, though, is just getting picked on right now. Uh, the boss hitting in the back, right? Big Ancestor healing, though, as Crosby will stay alive. A massive Silence, though, and B Genus comes in with the Mighty Gust, and they steal the boss. That is a three man wipe on Trick Esports. And uh, Cocoon to Daryl. Oh, they just got ravaged. They actually just got dominated in that situation. I, an ambitious boss call overall. So I think there were two big misplays there. One, I think the sanctification. I understand the theory behind you, but it missed out because it didn't hit Rhaegar, and Rhaegar actually did get popped by Leeming down to a quarter health. Uh -huh. And then Nape, a quarter health, moves in on the boss. Oh, big stage dive coming in. Rimmer trying to slow down this I think tribute. you've got to leave, Rema. Yeah, you need to leave. Oh. Big Sophia smash, though. Air King comes in, and there's a poke off. Rimmer gets a stage dive, goes to the power slide, and we have a kill. But suddenly, our Ragnaros oh. and Thurno is in trouble, but he well, will escape. Yeah, the one tool that they have to set up a Sophia smash worked. The power Power slide into the Sulfura Smash. So lovely to see that they're able to delay that and cap it themselves. So salvaging the situation a little bit, but they did lose a fort pretty much for free down towards the bot lane. Well, the boss will finally be defended down here in the bottom left. As you mentioned, the fort has been killed off, but luckily grabbing that tribute will delay the curse that could have been massive for BG. That could have been 13 for them and maybe a keep or at least additional fort. So Good play there by Turkey Esports, Eternal and Rimmer making the plays nice. stay alive there. Yeah, got themselves a consolation fort there, so just trying to catch up on that charge towards level 13. As B Genius here getting themselves their level 13s in, doing well. Bed of Barbs, always a good go to here for Anubarak. Uh, especially when he's a solo Anubarak, just kind of slow guys down a little bit on their impeding charge towards you can always be helpful. That Barb is such a strong tool, especially when you're pushing into fortune keeps. 
dropping down that and Kale for a choke can slow down him from going that choke for a couple of seconds. So yeah. just a strong, strong ability. Uh, I gotta completely agree. It's like if you land it with the usual positions between either a tower and a keep or a keep and a, uh, and a uh, the well, <laughs> then you control that area for, as you say, just a few seconds. It's it's very good because yeah. uh, the the space is just perfect. To the chokes just become spiky. You know, you still want to walk through them. So Spike damaging. Choke. Yeah. Indiana Jones will be proud. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Tribute in the bottom right. This is a big deal for both teams. They will be awarded a curse if they do grab it. Each season in the top lane, defending against the boss, but he does have a stage dive. All for ropes up for our team. Watch out for the cocoon and watch out for the sanctifications. They both will be important in the fight. Erikine does move on down to help out with the fight. Crosby can slow this push for a long time here, being in Odin form. ETC continuing to handle that top lane, but a big flank from Tank for the win. Yeah, going on towards Mappe again here, just trying to pressure him, knowing that he can't really do too much to himself to help himself. Ooh, and that is crazy. Yeah, just trying to slow them down from killing him off here. He's not quite hit the mark. As we're going to see Trick Esports still trying to zone out. Good rotation back around there from Fork Tank for the win, so he can get heals from Unstable. Here it is. The stage dive. Stage dive in. Power slide on to Unstable. The sounds comes out, though. There we go. Now a big Ancestral. The Cocoon has came out. We do have Unstable taking damage here from Rimmer on the back right. Alex Pro G low on health. Crosby 1v1 oh. with Eric Keen. Big Sulfur smash. And there is a pickoff. Eric Keen in trouble at the same time. He will be able to retreat, but. The Tribute now goes over to Trick Esports. Yeah, good push away there by Trick Esports and also good control of the Zeratul situation, making sure that he, because again, I, I have to emphasize this, for me, he has to be the big playmaker in this game and right now they're shutting him down. Every single time he went on to Nape, they were responding quickly. They forced him to Void Prism in a very uncomfortable and unuseful situation for B-Genius, which is uh, good control by Trick Esports. And this is why I had the criticism of a Anubrek in the pickup. He can't be the engager, ever. He has hmm. too low of a health pool. There is a massive Tychus on the side, and you can see as well that can do damage to him. And so you have Tank for the win being the big playmaker that you are looking for to make those plays, but the opening just isn't available for them. And I have to wonder if there was a variant here, but it'd be much better for them. Rimmer in trouble though, in the bottom left of Tank for the win is making good, good play. Save. Good save there from Nape. And honestly, it's all defense overall. We have all support at the bottom or the top. Alex Proji is engaging on the bottom right. We do have Crosby popping the Odin, but B Genius goes for the escape. Yeah, so looks like they'll just kind of stabilize this out. Trick T-Sports is going to back off. They know that they need to soak a little bit more. As much as their opposing team is cursed, they really haven't got much off of it. So BG Ines has done a very, very good job of slowing them down. I would argue at the same time, though, Trick T-Spot looking for a fight through mid there, instead of trying to get a little bit more structure damage, wasn't necessarily impactful on them getting towards 16. <laughs> yeah, they come back to the point that we mentioned in Infernal Shrines. Opening up the middle of the map is usually not something you want to do. I mean, you want to do it, but there's no reason for you to focus on it. The oh, Oscars are so important. Bye Another bye. big self-care <gasps> smash. No. Does Tank get away? He's literally like 3 HP right now. Ask Koji going for the engage. El Druid not being I... able to quite yet, and he does escape. I mean, I... Um, you know, when it comes to the Church of Zeratul, uh, all you have to say is that, you know, <laughs> miracles can happen. Miracles can happen. That <laughs> they can. <laughs> Thank for the for the win, will retreat. B Genus does hit level 16 as well. Slightly ahead of their opponents, and there are heroics down. So Fierce, Smash can use there, and Odin down for 30 more seconds. All right, so just cleaning up down towards the bottom uh, it will be Kirova. And as you see, with this level 16, they have good opportunities to really seize momentum very heavily in their favor now. They're going for the boss now. With 16 coming, Holy Ground will be available for Trick Esports. So now is the prime time to go for it. I would say be careful, though, because this is the king of throw bits. If you lose this yeah. boss and you lose a fight, you lose all momentum you have in the game. So Sanctification is off cooldown, but they do have Gust. They do have uh, Force of... Uh, um, what's it called? The one on... Ming. Anyway, and they have <laughs> force of that's the uh, wave of force. Yeah, wave of force. That one. <laughs> uh, so oh, ATC in towards the back. There it is, and we have Air King on the back right, being poked by the Molten Core. So Fierce Match comes oh. out, but it misses because Brimmer brings up the knockback. Unstable will ice block and walk away from the damage. Kirwa goes in for a big setup. Unfortunately, the Void Prism is Thanks. not dropped. Ancestor healing, sanctification, and finally Ragnaros gets a takedown on the back right. Yeah, perfect timing coming out for that. And saving the Sanks until the very last second that they actually need it off the back of that Void Prism. Uh, and that gives them a really good opportunity now to get themselves back into this game. Are they actually going to do this? Oh, yeah, yeah, 4v5. Yeah, the Gust's down, so is Void Prison. 
I'm upset for B Genius here. Hang on, we're gonna see if this is possible. Continue to fight here. Dantan goes to engage. Gearwalk comes in with the damage on Rimmer. Looking for that reset. Dantan continues with the dive and he gets poked down. Rimmer dodges the oh hammer ring and still stays alive. Nape with the chase and there is a swap here. Trick Esports is now cleaning up out. And suddenly, this momentum that B Genius had at their fingertips, they could have had a curse. They could have pushed down a keep. They had 16. They had resets available for them and it all falls apart because they tried to bait and engage around the boss when Molten Core is available and we have Trick Esports close to 16. Wow, that's such a shame for B Genius there, uh, as they really heavily focus this boss location, as you're mentioning. Uh, so now Trick Esports well in the driving seat once again in this game. This boss is going to go over to them. Tyrael is waiting on the other side just to make sure that the other boss wasn't being done. Uh, and then even if it was, uh, he could try and steal it with Holy Ground and then the reinforcement of his members because there was no way that B Genius was going to be able to start this boss in a timely manner to deny the rotation from getting there in time from Trick T Sport. No, there was no way for it to. And now suddenly this game goes from difficult mode to incredibly difficult mode for B Genius. They still have the trump card of getting a curse available for them if they do mm. grab a tribute, but they are in a serious threat of a boss pushing down bottom lane and an ETC, and a second boss maybe being grabbed by Trick Esports. They are spread thin right now. And honestly, Trick Esports doesn't have to actually focus this boss. They're just baiting them, trying to keep the units in this area, so they can get the uh, boss of the on the bottom end to actually just get on the keep. All right, so I'm taking the hard camp here as a consolation prize. I'm slightly surprised that Trick Esports didn't go as hard onto that boss. Uh, as they potentially could have done, but they're playing it safe. They, you know, they don't want to go to a fourth game. They just want to round this out 3-0, get themselves a nice pickup, a nice win. And Danatan, an unstable, lurking on the wings here. Alex the Proji scouting that out. Tricky Sport, just, just looking at the game, even though it's close 18 to 18, and there is the available path to victory from B Genius of getting the curse, it yeah. just feels like B Genius is so deflated right now after the last play. It just looks like it. They're all spread out now. They're playing completely safe. Uh, they've stopped making the aggressive plays we've seen from them in the early and the mid game. Yeah. It feels like Trick to Beat Sport is already won. And Beat Genius needs to take that momentum, that idea that Trick to Esports has, and flip it on its side. Even if that's the case, though, even if they are in that mentality where they're just a little bit dejected, they need to you know, rally together and understand that Zeratul with Void Prison, as well as also Gust and things like that, can still make massive, massive plays. They can turn around a game on their head, even 20 versus 19 in some extreme circumstances. But obviously, they just want to get themselves an equal footing, level 20. This boss is still going to be continued to be kind of mulled over. Uh, as for both teams, it's, it would march on to keep and thus cause uh, very crippling damage. I concur. I hope that BGNS does change up their attitude here. Uh, just Esports and BGNS now. 19 to 19, facing off on this bottom tribute. This will give curse to either team. Whoever does grab it, ETC is soaking in the bottom lane, has stage dive available, while BGNS has all hands on deck here. For the tribute, here comes Odin. And they may have needed to have false that just like even towards mid lane to be able to fly down. It's going to be uh, Malt Core being used to the south actually here on this. So good position, but Nappy taking a lot of damage. Kirimura as well as Danatan going towards Ragnaros. Uh, right, Rhaegar, that's perfect for them. They actually get a Zeratul kill off the back of that big silence going on towards three though. B Genius looking for more blood. That's a great sanctification to save the Commandeer Odin here. At the same time, the Crosby is going to fall. Kira blinks over the little right ravine there, and he's going to look for more damage on towards Alex and Proji. That was the engage oh. I needed from B Genius. They get three pickoffs, and now we'll grab the tribute and have Curse available to them. No more core here for defense. It all comes down to, oh, hang on, Eric continuing with the aggression, moving Damage. in for the ETC. Can they take him out? There we go. Damage is coming in. Kirwa low on mana, but it is enough. Four members wipe for Trick Esports. So it came down to Dantan hitting the cocoon. We had a solid dive on Nappe, which means they had no sustain, and then they could deal with Odin. I promise you, just get Kirva on Lee Meng from game to game. We have seen how much damage he's able to dish out and how impactful he has been on the kill targets. He makes it work, and it looks good. I mean, admittedly, all of B Genius came together there. There was a great gust from Arakeen coming out. There was some counterplay from Trick T Spot on the other side, but that even grew. Oh, God, that is. That's a nail in the coffin there for them, as they're going to just gust these two members away, dodge out the Sulfurous Smash. Kirva's very low. He's going to go down. 
Falstead needs to die. If they kill Falstead, they can defend this. They yeah, kill they Falstead. Can. can they go with the Antan oh, now? No. The Antan's next here. Get the Antan and then deal with the Malfury and they're both keeping them down. 18%, 17%, 16%. There comes uh, Unstable working his damage on the core. He's gonna ice block. He uh, doesn't Tank have the, the uh, Twilight Dream quite yet and he will miss it. Here's Tank for the win on Zeratul, but he's locked down. Massive Void Prison, but it's not enough. All five members of B Genius lose out on their core rush, and I'm looking at someone next no, to me. Don't. I may or may not be blaming him, but Tricked Esports can now go for a push. All right. So, <laughs> they, admittedly, right, let's let's look at the very final moments of that. Zeratul coming in and using Void Prism buys them a little bit of time. Admittedly, him being alive and using a Void Prism on the other side might have been quite useful mm -hmm. uh, for defense. Um, but now they've got heroic difficulty, and I'm pretty sure Molten Court is not on cooldown. It no, doesn't matter. Not. They it's have sanctification. They go yeah, they have everything. Here. They set up for everything. I... They wait for the combo from Kirwa, and they drop Zank. There we go. Now they focus down the core. Let's see if they can hold this. Falsa does have Mighty Gust. There is a Mighty Gust. The Molten Core is on the core and 80% and dropping. Not a member to fall yet here. Oh, Molten Core killing off a member in the back right. No more Lee Ming, which means your defense is uh, much worse here. Cocoon comes out on Tychus. They continue to apply all damage to the core. And Trick Esports is setting themselves up here to take game number three against B Genius, and they get another victory in the HCC. Yes, they do. 3-0, very well done. Uh, and also, towards the end there, the prioritization to kill off Li Ming with the Molten Core. Li Ming is one of the best defenders of cores, keeps any kind of structure in the game. Yeah. Uh, and she was heavily prioritized there by Eternal. Really good play by him, and I'm sorry. I... <sighs> I feel really bad for BGNIS uh, just because they had a couple of outstanding moments to where they could take that game. They had the moment down by the boss where they danced around a yeah, lot, yeah. Um, where they didn't really need to do that because they, they were seriously there. They had momentum. They could taste it. Uh, and instead, they go for a boss call, which makes sense, again, because Tyrrell's at 15, but it's a risk that you don't need to take. They, they didn't really need to take the call risk. They did. They, they'd, they'd, won three to, they'd won that fight 3-0. to zero. They had all five mem or four members. I can't quite recall, but anyway, they they didn't they didn't have any of their keeps down, so they had um, no catapults pushing up against them. I think they got a bit ambitious. Yeah, a bit ambitious there. Uh, admittedly, it was very close. It was very <laughs> very close. Uh, so unfortunate for B Genius. Again, it's good to see life from them. They had some adjustments there. There are some things that are coming to light for them. Kirwa on Li Ming has been I a love it. absolute delight yes. to watch. So we would love to see more of it. Uh, but Tricky Esports also starting to hit some stride here. And, you know, again, they had the playing Ducks matchup where they were up 2-0 and they play Chogo and they kind of seemed to just fall off in the entire best of five series. If it was a different world, Tricky Esports would have three wins mm. right now. And they have now secured two. And they're on the up and up, which is what we've been wanting from them in the last couple of weeks. They've already gone through the hard matchups. They'll face more later on, but yeah. they are winning the matches they need to. Yeah, definitely. I think the only anomaly for Tricked Esport was them going up against playing Ducks and having that bit of a heartbreaker game number three, yeah. which kind of snowballed out of control a little bit in that series. Uh, but other than that, I think they've won the matches that they need to. Uh, and I think that for them, looking at phase one, they know that this, this phase has been difficult. Yep. across the board. Um, so they'll be looking for the entire season. They're looking at a year picture uh, to grow together, to play together, and to find a really good stride together. And the same thing is there for B Genius. You know, they're working yes. on coming together. And every week I walk away and I see a little bit more light uh, at the end of the dark tunnel that they are sadly in right now. Um, but they are this much closer to getting a win there on the board. Just, you know, B Genius at home. Continue improving, continue to be better there. Find your strengths, continue with it. Um, the only major criticism I have in the draft, I feel like they did okay in drafting here, uh, was I, I just the Anubrek. Uh, I like the idea behind it. They executed it well once mm. in this series, especially in that fight in the bottom right where they went for the core rush, where they had the cocoon on Ethereal, yeah, the soft yeah. sanctification, and they had the full dive on the Rhaegar when Molten Core had been popped up. Uh, but one has to wonder if you had gotten a better, beefier engager there if it could have worked out overall a little bit more for the team. Yeah, the, the idea of uh, going Zeratul, Falstad, Li Ming with a solo Anubarak, yeah. that's, that's a very thin back line with a very thin front line. Mm. It's a fragile composition that requires extra... I mean, I said it about Ver a Varian as a solo where it requires finesse to pull off. Likewise, this uh, composition requires finesse as well. Um, where... 
you know, maybe if we saw one of the big three kind of have one of those compositions, you know, I'd have a lot more faith in it. Yeah. Uh, be genius, you know, it just it all needs to come together just a little bit more. It's before. the same case with the solo Tyrael. Whenever we have Fnatic or yeah. Misfits running, we're like, okay, it's beautiful. You guys Do got it. this. Yeah. But uh, on the lower sides here, there's just some coordination issues that are holding these teams back for minus solo hero. Uh, for yes. you guys at home, though, uh, we're getting set up here for Alex the Proji to be the member mm. that we talked to. Um, we'll be getting him on the phone as soon as we can, and uh, we'll discuss his thoughts over the last few weeks, man. Um, I, again, Alex Proji is someone that when you talk to him, you get a very real sense of what he is feeling because he is very forward with his thoughts uh, at, about his team and himself. Yeah, most definitely. He's one of the big critical thinkers of the European scene, mm -hmm. um, not only in his own play, but also just the meta in general. Uh, a very, very smart guy uh, when it kind of puts his mind to the game. So it's always nice to talk to Alex. Yeah, I want to talk to him about the alteration we saw today. Is this something that we're going to see more from when we talk to Alex the Proji and see his team? Are we going to see mm. less warrior-dependent comps, the two to three warriors that we've seen so much in the past? Because today we had a few mix-ups. We had more Falstad. Uh, we had a little bit more Ragnaros as well. Um, but, uh, oh, actually, I'm getting a note here. We're going to have Crosby instead to talk to. But regardless, yeah. still the same questions. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, and I haven't spoken to Crosby for a long time, actually. So I'm ready for him, man. <laughs> Especially with him being the team captain here. Uh, I want to talk to him about uh, coming together and, you know, rallying his team when you've had such a hard start. It's so hard to pull.